Hi, it's Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. Today I have four fall flips for you. If you're new on this channel, you will see crafts, furniture flips, a lot of great dump hauls, and trash to treasures from those items. Today, number one is from that lot of baskets I had picked up. Some months ago, I paid a dollar per basket. And this blue one is the one that I'm going to be working on today. So I put it in the sink, sprayed it real good, and cleaned it. And then once it was dry, then I decided that I wanted to do a color. This color is called Silver Sage. I have had it for years, and it has held up so well. I think, and I'm not positive, it is either Glidden or it is Sherwin-Williams. It goes on so thick. I wish I knew because I would buy it again over and over and over. What a phenomenal quality paint this paint is. One coat covers everything I've put it on. This color Silver Sage has the slightest hint of a sage green, um, and it is just perfect, I think, for fall because those pumpkins or um, Hubbard squash that we have here anyway have a really pretty pale green hue. And I thought that I would do something a little less traditional for um, the fall decor this year. So once I had given this just one good coat then I decided that even though I am going to do something else with the handle, I will paint it first. Then once I got that entire handle painted, I'm going to leave this to dry and we'll come back to this. I'm going to move on to item number two and um, put this all together as a little vignette. So item number two is this just dollar pumpkin round or whatever pumpkin shape that you can get at the dollar store. I picked mine up last year or the year before that when they were a dollar. Now they're a dollar 25. And I decided I would do this in the same color. And again, one coat went on phenomenal, nice, beautiful coat here. And then I am going to let this dry. This is a latex paint. It is not a chalked paint. So with the latex paint, it takes a little bit longer to dry, but the coverage is phenomenal and it's not re-activated um, with water. So I don't have to spray anything over any of these projects when I'm done or use wax. I could, but I opted not to. And then once this one is completely dry, then I came back with my antiquing wax and painted the uh, stem. And then I wanted to draw on some lines to make it look more like a pumpkin. And that's just simple. Just go ahead and take your light hand on a brush, kind of dry brush it on a little bit, and just add that shape where you have the two outside C's, so to speak, or parentheses, and then add a couple more in the center where they are obviously supposed to go based on the bottom. Um, I just took a napkin and then just sort of rubbed that in and then added some all around the outside edge to give it some definition. And then I like to put a little bit more along the bottom because I think pumpkins tend to have a little bit more of a darker color on the bottom. And I kept that really basic. Again, I'll come back to that. So moving on to item number three, these are just trash. I happen to have um, a little honey and a little maple syrup bottle left over from some time ago. And this Valspar paint is like a pumpkin color. That is a sample, and it was left on the good table at our dump with a couple of other colors. And I thought this would be great for some of the fall um, colors that I want to do. It doesn't say the name of it. It just has all the numbers on the bottom, but boy, it really is a pretty fall color. So this Valspar paint is much thinner than the other one. So I know the other one is not Valspar. I believe it's Glidden, um, but it is a really good quality, that greenish color. Now I had these from Hobby Lobby. I paid 90 cents, 90% uh, off or something years ago. And I thought, how adorable would these be since they have that little wooden top to be little pumpkins? So um, 
you can see the difference in paint on this specifically because this orange Valspar paint is going on very thin. So I finished the first coat and put that away to dry and then pulled out that greenish colored paint. And look at the difference. Unbelievable. One coat covers this cross, uh, what is this plaid pattern? Um, in one coat, I couldn't even believe how well this covered it. It goes on so nice, nice and uh, they're both latex, but this one just covered it beautifully. So I only had to do this once and then go back and redo the pumpkin colored one. Um, in fact, I had to do the pumpkin colored one three times, I think, in order to get it completely covered. So I did one of the little jars in the green and one in the orange. Now last year I had done a whole bunch of cute little different shape jelly jars and relish jars and made pumpkins out of those. I'll try to remember to link that um, in the description box so you can check those out. And I used spindles uh, for little pumpkin tops on those. So if you want a different idea, we drilled a hole in the lid and we screwed a spindle piece on and um, those came out adorable but this year I wanted to do something a little bit different than that so here I am putting second and third coat um, of orange onto both of those now once the little ones are dry I um, put the lids back on it took a little bit of the wax and out of frame just added a few of those pumpkin lines then grabbed uh, Spanish moss and some small little corks. This is a wine cork. And so I am just taking, I got a, about a thousand wine corks at the good table at the dump for free. Uh, so I use them whenever I can on little projects like this or little feet for um, risers, things like that. But I just hot glued a little bit of the Spanish moss onto the wine cork, then right onto that. And then just going to go ahead and embellish that a little bit more with a little piece of fabric and some leaves and such to make it look more like a pumpkin. And then I had this little other cork. I have no idea how this works. Um, I don't know if it's a wine cork or what, but it looks like it. But it also has like a plastic base. It's like almost like a half a wine cork. But anyway, I used this one because I thought that was cute. That was the only one in my bunch that looked like that. And then again, added a little bit of that little antiquing wax here and there just to sort of give it that lines and then decorate both of those with um, just whatever you have hanging around the house, you know. Th those florals oftentimes have more leaves than you want, so I, I like to save the leaves and use them for projects like this. And then um, once I was done with that, I went back and added just a touch of Spanish moss uh, to the other side of this one. But you can add pip berries. Um, you can add string, lace, you know, dress it up any way that you like to. And then um, went back to the orange one and, and sh switched out that um, and made a bow out of twine instead of the fabric that I had on that one. I just wanted these to look a little bit different from one another. And then um, went on to the larger jars once I was done with this. Now on those, I wanted to use this pip berry. I had picked up on Amazon a whole big package of these last Christmas for something, and I had a couple of these left over. So I just twisted it on the end of my paintbrush to make those little pumpkin tendrils. And um, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame here for this, but you get the idea. I uh, glued a, a leaf right on it in case I want to do something different with the jars later on, I would, didn't want to add any glue directly to that pretty wooden lid um, or the jar. And then I had these cool little metal pumpkins. I pulled off one of those baskets ages ago. So that's a cute embellishment. I'll show you at the end. On to item number four. I went into my fabric stash, which I recently organized, and found a piece of wool fabric in a what I feel like is a very fall color tone, and um, just went ahead and cut it so that I could rip a piece of it on one end for the basket. I wanted to start with um, just wrapping that. So just gave it a little touch of glue, wrapped it, put another little bit of glue 
um, just somewhere along the you know top of it and then one more at the end so that if I decide of course in the future that I don't want this piece of fabric on here I don't have you know a ton of glue all over it making it hard to get off and then I'm pulling it kind of taunt so that it will not unravel although this is going to be sitting on a shelf somewhere so it's not likely I'll be using it for anything but still I want to keep it all together so once I got that finished I just it happened to have exactly enough fabric to um, just glue that last piece on there and dress that up a bit I thought about using a darker like twine or rope or but I didn't have anything in my stash that was the right color and so so far this basket has cost me one dollar and the jars were free and now I'm using that same piece of fabric and some leftover pillow stuffing that I had and I am making some pumpkins out of that same fabric because I want this vignette to kind of go together and uh, I'm sure you've seen people do this before but in case you haven't this little piping I don't even know what it is it came from the dollar store uh, years ago and so I just had this piece left over it's almost like a hollow tube of I don't know plastic of some sort but it kind of works good for this it looks a little like those pumpkin tendrils so stuff it tuck it in here and there use some glue if you need to to make sure that stays on there and then tie it nice and tight and then leave the long end uh, on the rest of it so you can wrap that end against uh, you know around it once wrap it around the top pull it nice and tight and then do it one more time around the other side so you end up with four and you can do it six times too I didn't have enough um, I ended up with uh, four little bumps so to speak to make that look a little bit more like a pumpkin and then I'm spreading these out to sort of look a little bit like the leaves and adding a cork in the center of this pumpkin and then um, cutting off the edges and making that just look like the little tendrils now I went ahead and made a small one this is a larger one and I made exactly the same thing um, in a smaller one so that I could use them both in my display so here is how both the large and small little pumpkins came out and I think that they're really cute something different I know you see pumpkins everywhere all over the place here and there so if you've got something in this shape then I thought this would be something fun to do to make them just look a little bit different than everybody else's. Have to let me know what you think about the color. Would you prefer the traditional orange or do you prefer something like the green and creams in your fall display? And then here is the wooden pumpkin. I just added the same color fabric with a little bit of lace. And then here is the basket and the trim in the same. And then here are the two pumpkins that I made to put inside of the basket and pull that whole vignette together to um, just give it the look and the feel that I am going for. I prefer a very neutral color tone. Last year I did a lot of pumpkins in um, drop cloth fabric and some in the cream sweater fabrics and I will also link that one for you. And uh, that is all there was to it. So let me know what you think about this. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.